There are many things in academia and education that you are just expected to do without being taught and writing a research proposal is one of them. I've never sat in a lecture theatre or a professional setting and have been taught how to do this. So it's one of the things that you self-teach and that is why the video that I posted on YouTube about how to write a research proposal has over half a million views. It is a really important topic. You need to write a research proposal in order to show what your proposed research is in order to develop your research in a more feasible way and to get approved for funding or to continue on with your studies. It's written in a very specific format and this is something that I've spoken about in that previous video so I'll leave a link for it down below and I'll leave it up here as well so feel free to go ahead on there and click and watch that video. In today's video I'm going to be going through a step-by-step -step template that I have developed for writing a research proposal. Now this template goes through every single step from devising your idea and thinking about what kind of research you want to do in the gap in literature and then actually going into the third stage of the proposal which is actually the writing part. So I've termed this a three stage um, process, um, stage one, stage two and then finally stage three which is writing and I'm going to be going through it today and if you'd like to download the research proposal then I'll leave the link for it down below, go ahead and click on that um, and if not then feel free to watch this video and gain the tips from here too. Okay, so let's run through the template. It is 14 pages long and it includes a PDF of the breakdown of the structure, step-by-step -step with spaces for you to include your own text. And then it includes a timeline um, Gantt chart, which I'm gonna go through as well. So there are three stages. The first is sorting of ideas. Second is the argument map organization. And the third is actually writing the proposal. So the first stage is thinking about your ideas. And this is where I have this sort of map where you can arrange your thoughts, ideas, and arguments and your discussion points based on your reading. So, you know, before you've written your research proposal, you need to know sort of what topic it is that you're writing about. So to be able to do this before you even think about writing your proposal, you want to have thought about the literature. What is the gap in literature? What is something interesting that you want to look at and research, what would be interesting to look at for the future, um, what would be an interesting topic that could be built up on after you. These are all things that you want to consider when thinking about a topic that you want to study. Okay, so the first stage is sorting of ideas. And this is where you wanna think about the motivation, your previous research, the theoretical basis, and the methods of what it is that you want to think about and what it is that you want to study within this research. So essentially here you're just thinking about the literature that you've read and all the reading that you've done, bringing that together and putting it in a sense that makes sense and convinces your reader, convinces the audience that there is a good justification for your research and there's a good reasoning behind why it is that you want to look at what you're looking at and then kind of trying to think about the method. So how exactly are you going to answer this question? So you've said that there's a gap in literature in this particular area. How are you proposing that you are going to approach this question? How are you proposing that you are going to approach and answer this question? Then stage two is the argument map organization. So here we're talking about how to structure an argument within your literature review, so in the introduction section of your research proposal, you wanna think about the argument map. So here there are sort of three main parts. The first part is the claim. So what is the claim? What is the point that you're making? So in this example, I'm saying that research on the effectiveness of project-based learning in science education is needed because. So I'm saying that this research is needed, this is the claim. Then you've got reasoning. So what is the reason behind it? Because it does this, and it does this, however there is a lack of this, right? So you can see the terminology that I've used. I've said there's a claim here, I've then said this is the statement, this is why, and then I've said there's also this understanding, and then, but there is a lack, so this is where the gap in literature is. Then I've given some evidence, furthermore, um, this implementation of the project-based learning can be challenging for teachers and there's a need for more guidance. So you can clearly see that this is what the argument map wants. You know, you kind of have to think about your research in a bit of a step-by-step -step method. What is the claim? What is your reasoning? And what is the evidence for it? So I've given some, some gaps here where you can write down a few claims um, and a few reasonings. And then the last stage is actually writing the proposal. So I'm going through each step 
of the proposal, each section of the proposal, and I'm giving you prompts and leaving space for you to actually include this information here. So the first thing is the title. You want to make sure that your title is clear, concise, um, and includes all the information that is uh, sufficient to give a good understanding of what your study is about. Next, it's your project summary. So within the project summary, it's about 100 words. So it's a bit of an abstract, so it isn't uh, an introduction. It's just a summary of your work. You want to kind of introduce your topic and explain to the reader what it is that you're going to be talking about and, and the research question and the hypothesis and then conclude it. The next section is the background. So in the background, you are again speaking more about, this is the biggest section. So this is, a, this is more about the research area, the literature review, um, what the topic is about. So that's in here. That is all the space I've left for you over here for the backgrounds. Quite, this is probably the longest part. Then you've got the objectives and the research question. So the next section will be the objectives and the research question. And here you're going to be using um, SMART goals. So SMART in order to say exactly what it is that you want to um, do. So specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. And these are all uh, questions that should really align with the ma main research questions. An objective is something that sits within the overarching research question. So this is your topic. How are you going to attain? Like, how are you going to get there? What are the things that you're going to do? What are the objectives? And that goes underneath the research question one. Um, then the next part is the theoretical framework and the methods. This is usually just methods and materials. Sometimes, depending on the topic, you might want to frame it as theoretical framework. And here you want to include any methods, any approach that could include the research design, the sur any surveys, interviews. Um, you want to think about the methods, analysis of your data, and also ethical considerations. Um, now here you want to also include a timeline. And what I've done is I have included a template for timeline for you within this template. Um, so we can go to that right now and I'll take, show you um, what it looks like. So this is essentially a Gantt chart um, and a Gantt chart is a timeline that allows you to show um, how you've progressed and how you are planning on progressing through your PhD. So you can clearly see I've done three years here, year one, year two and year three. And what you want to do is you want to add the particular task here. So for example, I've said you're going to write a literature review or go through the literature essentially, and then you're going to do the research questions and the methods and ethical approval. And this is going to take you, you know, up to a year to pilot, to get to the point where you can pilot some studies. So essentially all you need to do is you, you write down the task here and then you highlight how long it will take you. And that is what a Gantt chart is essentially. So this is also included within this template. Um, then you want to go into the next section, which is about significance and the contribution of your proposed research. So here it is all about why this research is necessary. You are convincing your reader, you are persuading your reader, you are trying your best to tell them in the most um, sort of evidence-based way that this research is necessary. So this could be, maybe it could be necessary for advancing the particular field, it could be necessary for trying to get um, some sort of a pharmaceutical drug from it, it could be interesting for just understanding or maybe introducing a new method into the research area. So why is this research important? You want to convince the reader. Um, so that's the next section. And then after that, you have the timeline, the plan that can also go there. I've added some um, information here. So some stages that you might want to consider are, I've included some stages for year one, year two, and year three. So for example, for year one, you might want to think about um, a literature review. And that is not saying that you're writing one. It just means that you're actually reading through all the literature. It does take a lot of time. Don't be fooled. Um, and then thinking about ethical approval. If you're if you have some sort of ethical approval that you need to gain, if you're using like a particular cell type or if you're using like humans um, for a clinical study, then you want to do a pilot study. Uh, so you're actually testing the method and the framework um, and then any other coursework or training. So this could be some things you think about in the first year, for example. Last but not least, references and citations. So for this section, you want to have a nice reference list that includes all the citations that you've mentioned within your paper. This should be a really substantial, important part of this study and your proposal because you know, you're know you basing your research off of somebody else's work. This is, unless you have, you're starting from zero and you're starting from scratch, you've started 
your proposal based on the gaps in literature of other people's research. So you need to cite who those people are, mention who they are, and then of course, um, add those references to the end of your paper. Yeah, as I mentioned, this is the video where I spoke about it in more detail. So as I said, it was two years ago, has like half a million views now. And it really is because this is a topic that no one really speaks about um, within university. It's a requirement to apply for university. It's a requirement to apply for a PhD but there's no formal teaching for it. So hopefully this video and this template uh, combined with my previous video that I think people find really helpful where I'm breaking, down, uh, breaking it down into a lot more detail as well. Um, hopefully that can help you get a research proposal together. Um, don't forget I mentioned that this template, the link for it is in my bio down below and it will be I think in my comments somewhere. Um, so if you do want to grab it, then do click on the link down below. Um, and I really appreciate the support, of course. And do let me know if there's any other templates or any other resources that you'd like to see from me. I'm more than happy to design them for you. Um, and yeah, I'll speak to you guys in the next video. See you. Bye.